Hey folks, I'm Psychotrog, and welcome to Let's Play Journey, the arcade game. This was released in 1983 by Bally Midway. Um, the Frontiers album was also released that year, and that really was a big hit for Journey. And so, what Bally Midway decided to do was create an arcade game, which coincided with the U.S. tour, and, well, the game's terrible. You have to get your instruments back from the alien groupoids, which have put ridiculous comic obstacles in your, in your path while you fly around in your scarab vehicle in space, and then you have to go play your gig in space, and at the gig are the same groupoids, and you have to defend its journey from the groupoids, who will inevitably steal the instruments back, repeating the cycle all over again. So yeah. This game was number nine on Game Informer's top ten worst licensed game ideas ever, so obviously what I need to do is play it. That's a little demo here. Demo's going a little long. There we go. Here we go, jumping into the Scarab be Beetle vehicle, and you can see that they have Journey's faces. Um, this technology was actually intended to be used for high score tracking in a game, but it was it failed testing when somebody flashed the camera, so they used it for this. Here's Steve Perry's level, where you dodge um, shutters to collect your microphone, and then shoot them in a Space Invaders-style fashion while listening to a shitty MIDI version of Don't Stop Believin'. Up and down the boulevard. Yeah, this is really just, like, the worst thing. Go, Steve Perry, go. Shoot those red and white flashing shutters. Oh, we made it to the orange line. We're back on the ship. All right, that's Steve Perry's level. And there I am, saving my state, apparently, which you will not see again. Um, here we are in Neil Schoen's level, where we're listening to Chain Reaction. Oh, uh, here goes. Grab it. Oh, uh, he's using a jetpack. You can use up and left and right to control the jetpack. Once you grab your instrument, oh, those beetles, they come to life. They shoot out. And this is probably one of the two easiest levels in the game, because you just have to avoid one beetle. That's all you have to do. And you win. Okay, there we go. A little editing there. Here we are in Jonathan Kane's level where we're listening to Stone in Love. All right, watch as we jump over these little shutters by pressing up. That's all you do. He's on rails. He moves by himself. All you got to do is push up to jump over these things. It's actually kind of fun listening to these, like, crappy MIDI versions of the Journey songs. And once you get your piano, you have to shoot at these things while making obnoxious-ass piano noises. I'm not really sure who thought this piano noise was a good idea. Each instrument makes its own sound. Um, I think Neil Schoen can probably shoot too, but I didn't try that out. It's it's really not worth my time. Here we go with Steve Smith's level, Wheel in the Sky. What you have to do in this level is turn all the drums on the screen blue. When you drop on a, jump on a red drum, it turns blue. When you drop, jump on a blue drum, it goes away. If you fall to the bottom of the level, you die. Luckily, that drum's there to save your ass once. That's just in your way. This level's actually surprisingly easy. All you have to do is just point yourself in a direction. Jonathan Kane's level, as you saw, was very easy as well. Um, Steve Perry's level sometimes gives me trouble. Well, that part of this level's easy anyway. Now you have to play Drummer Galaga with these little things. And as you can see, it's really hard to make any forward progress. Luckily, Steve Smith gets there. And we got an extra life, 20,000 points. Here we go to the last level, Ross Valerie's level, where we have to jump from these ludicrous structures, um, left and right, and grab our guitar here, and then we shoot at those very same structures that were helping us before, because now they shoot records at us. That's right. So all you have to do is basically clear one side, and just sort of run on down that way. So, and then you can make your way back to the Scarab vehicle. Once you do, oh my gosh. Now, ordinarily, if we were in the arcade, right now there would be an edited, looped version of Separate Ways playing from a cassette deck within the unit. What's not happening right now is that, because this is not the original arcade unit, unfortunately. So what happens is the groupoids run at Journey, and Herbie the Bouncer has to bounce them, you move left and right, until eventually one of the groupoids gets past you. And guess what happens, folks? Well, you'll see in a second. Look at those groupoids move. Oh, that guy. Journey escapes, but the groupoids steal your instruments. And the game repeats itself. I'm not kidding. 
This is real. This is what really happens. The game repeats itself. Over and over and over again. I haven't really noticed it getting any harder or anything, it just repeats itself. So, yeah. It's a little bit stupid, but, you know, there you go. Anyway, uh, that's the entire Journey Arcade game. I hope you enjoyed this journey. Oh god, I just said that by accident. This trek through a musical landscape with Steve Perry and friends. I'm Psychotrog. This game has tapped into my sanity and drained it. See you later.